<clears throat> um, when you're given a problem like this and they want you to find the maximum for our objective equation is x plus 3y. So what I explained last class period and what I'd like you guys to do is before you get into anything with linear, um, linear programming, the main important thing is just to graph each one of your linear inequalities. So when graphing our linear inequalities, the best thing that I like to do is rewrite my linear inequality in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to do that for each one. Now, the one mistake that I saw a lot of students doing is they forgot that the slopes were negative. So they were going like down and to the left. Over here, if I was going to graph this, I'm going to go up to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to go down 1, over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down 1, over 1. 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 OK, and then I'm going to, that's less than or greater than or equal to. Now, the other thing is I saw students going crazy with grading. They're shading the whole thing. When it's a linear, when you're graphing more than two inequalities, just use arrows and then shade the feasible region at the end. So it's less than, right? So therefore, I'm just going to show myself two little arrows to say, hey, you're going to shade below that line. Then let's do the next one. x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8. Subtract x, subtract x. 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 8. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Remember, the 2 goes into both of those. And also remember, there's a 1 there. So y is less than or equal to a negative 1 half x plus 4. So now I'm only going to go up to 4. And instead of going down 1 over 1, I'm going to go down 1 over 2. And then I'm just going to connect that line. Okay, And then again, that's a less than or equal to. So I go down. I'm going to be shading down. Is anybody following me or not have any questions so far? So everybody good? So again, write your inequalities in slope-intercept form and graph and then shade, but just use the arrows. Right now, we know everything's being shaded below. Then a lot of students had trouble with these. x is greater than or equal, y is greater than, um, y is greater than or equal to 0. Well, x is greater than or equal to 0, guys. Remember, this is the x-axis. Right? That's 1. That's negative 1. That's 0. When x, think of that as x equals 0. That's when x equals 0. That's going to be a vertical line. But it's saying they want you to shade for all values that are greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be pointing to the right or to the left? To the right. Again, I'm just going to use arrows. Then we have y is greater than 0. This is the y-axis. That's 1. That's negative 1. That's 0. So that is a horizontal line. And then it's y is greater than, so that's going to be going up. So hopefully you guys see, by looking at all of these arrows, you guys can see there's a feasible region, which is right here. And I'd like you guys to shade your feasible region. You don't need to label it, but you should know what that represents. OK? Now, of that feasible region, you can see that feasible region is bounded by 1, 2, 3, 4 boundary lines. right? If you guys agree those are lines, we call them boundary lines because they're creating a boundary. Well, where those boundary lines intersect on the feasible region are what we call our vertices. So we'd say vertices. So our vertices are at 0, comma, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have another vertice at 2, comma, 1, 2, 3. And my last vertice is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Even though this is another intersection, it's not on the, it's not on the feasible region. So we're not include that one. We only, include the free, we only include the vertices that are on the feasible region. Does that make sense? Yes? A little bit? Lots of my notes? OK. Now we need to maximize the objective function. So you guys can see that each of these coordinate points is an x and a y coordinate point. Now all we're simply going to do 
is plug in x and y into my objective function. And we're going to determine which one gives us the maximum value. Does everybody see how I plugged in each value in for x and y of the objective function? And we get, it's what? Yes, that does produce my maximum. Oh, wait, no. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it's 0, 4. It's close, though. It's very close. But that actually produces my maximum. Anybody have any questions on that? Make sure your 8 is correct, especially if you had missing work from there. Yes? So I would recommend, um, I did some videos. When you're graphing, like not on graph paper, um, you're not always going to have the exact vertices corrected. Okay. Um, also, even if you do have on graph paper, you might have vertices that are in between integers. right? So you might have a fraction as an integer. So you're just going to have to estimate to the best of your ability. Obviously, like on a test or something, um, you're not going to be, you know, I would just say be careful as you can. Like for instance, when the slope is down one over one, you can see I went down one over one, down one over one. I continue that pattern so I could see all these different points that lie on the line. Okay, but it's okay if you're a little bit off because we're not dealing with something that's exact in this case. Okay, one thing you could always use is use graphing technology and find the intersect of the two lines, which I can help you out with that um, if you have a graphing calculator. Graphing calculator would help you do that as well.